Uh, maybe s um, some of you don't know so much about the project, so we got a trailer. It's about two minutes, and it's going to contextualize the work, and then we'll be happy to to talk about a few things after. So if we could launch the trailer, and then we'll take the floor in two minutes. This project was born out of frustration as a photojournalist. I have covered conflict for the last 18 years, and I knew I could not just do the same when I became a father. Yet, I was not done with trying to understand wars. My friend in Israel, when they know I'm heading for Gaza, cannot help themselves but to wish me luck and to stay safe. They believe a lot of people in Gaza are irrational. But also when I spend weeks in Gaza working, and I'm about to return to Israel, my Palestinian friends are telling me exactly the same. Just be careful there. So there is a bigger story than the war itself, and perhaps this is the one I need to explore and share. This project is rooted in my experience, covering from one side to the other in many different wars and conflicts. Finding that people's dreams, hopes, and nightmares are often more similar than they are different. Who's your enemy? For the audience to understand and feel that, we will use artificial intelligence and cognitive science yes, and the latest technologies in virtual and augmented realities. <laughs> Fox Harrell, a professor and the founder of the Ice Lab at MIT, will provide the analytical backbone. When the audience walks in between enemies, we will measure how they physiologically respond to the installation. And by using neuroscience research, we hope to shed light on what kind of empathy has been created. I am planning to bring the fighters of other long-standing conflicts together in a very same way. You create an enemy as a kid without having met your enemy, because the society around you has created an enemy in the other. So the question is, could I be you if I was on the other side? Sorry for the sound. Up. Obviously, there's been a, a too much bass or something, or the settings were not right. But I hope you understood uh, what we are doing. Um, I'm very, very happy to be here today because it kind of all started here um, with VR, and uh, discovered it very early on when I was invited by uh, William and, and Sarah to be a, a fellow at the Open Dog Lab, and thought I had this project with photographs on the wall that were looking at each other. It was enemies, same questions. There was already some sound, but then I wonder, as a journalist, what would happen if those guys on the walls would actually be in the room? What, what would happen to the storytelling? What would happen? Because journalism doesn't really have anything like cognitive uh, science and, and, and the body language. And here you're facing people, and you also get, gather a lot of information about who they are just by the way they move, the way they look at you, and the way they interact in the room. Uh, and that's really them. Uh, as a journalist, I really copy uh, and, and, and recreate exactly what was happening during the interview. It's really what you see uh, on the ground. Um, and as a storyteller, I've been wondering how efficient I was. Uh, was where my stories, as a photojournalist covering conflicts, were, were they impactful? Were they changing the situation? Um, on the ground, when you're in a conflict zone, you have a moral contract with the people you photograph in a way that they are often in the worst time of their life and they accept you as a witness, but they don't just do it because they're kind. They do it because uh, they believe you can make a difference. The question is, did I? I'm not sure, I'm really not sure, uh, but that has informed um, this project and, 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 and wishing for understanding a little bit this, and this is where <laughs> I get to meet Fox, and, and, and where we start talking together and, and, and trying to think about how we could understand better the users inside, how we could augment the world of the user as he moves within the enemy. And we'll leave the, leave the, the, the word now to, to Fox to explain maybe a little bit more what, what we're after here. Okay, so I, I can say a little bit about this project as well. And so 
uh, this project uh, and, and our collabor well, the collaboration we have on this project began, as was mentioned, when uh, Kareem was here in the Open Documentary Lab. Uh, and uh, subsequently, we began collaborating on it after finding that there are a lot of synergies in our underlying points of view. Because I run the Imagination, Computation, and Expression Lab here to invent new forms of social media, interactive narrative, video games, to, uh, to use AI as a, uh, that use AI as an underlying backbone to engage social issues. For example, model how people's identities begin to change over time. To be able to have systems that respond to and model particular kind of issues like form, covert forms of discrimination. And, and so what we began to see was a kind of overlap between our interests here. And when Kareem first showed this project, then he explained that the early version of it was coming out of his kind of frustration that as a photojournalist, your pictures are just taken up and then maybe used in a completely different context than you imagine. And so he began, in fact, doing his own kind of artistic journalistic work, which is pairing the, the stories of two different individuals with a lot of parallel structure, the same basic basic humanizing questions. Who is your enemy? Have you killed before? Where do you see yourself in, uh, in 10 years? You know, these kind of basic human questions on either side. And in fact, they had a lot of parallels with our kind of approach in interactive narrative. And uh, the parallel is, in fact, that when you tell the same story from multiple points of view, uh, different times, then there's a kind of meaningful difference that emerges. And it's that meaningful difference where the kind of emergent message comes from. And in this case, the emergent message for us is a kind of uh, humanizing message, because you began to see some of the kind of parallels between these two stories. That is, not to disregard the kind of particular histories that exist in, in the different regions. Uh, you know, Kareem has been in, uh, uh, in Gaza, in Kashmir. He just got back from East Congo, and, and, uh, and so on. We have of uh, future conflicts uh, planned. Uh, and so you know, th this idea that you can have this kind of emergent message that, uh, you know, that just comes from these distinctions of the experience was something that uh, struck me and was a parallel with what we we're doing with artificial intelligence systems. And then that raised for me two of the kind of key issues with this project, which are empathy and uh, impact, wh which are kind of conversations that exist uh, quite, a, quite a great uh, deal around uh, virtual reality. And so the two uh, ways that we began to discuss and think about these issues, one which is, uh, 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 first, what is empathy? I mean, research on empathy, say a single paper, might have eight different definitions of empathy. A lot of people look at empathy as something like a trait, you know, that, like introversion or extroversion, rather than uh, uh, something that can be uh, measured, cultivated, and, uh, and taught. That's sometimes known as situational empathy. Can we, we can just have proxies to get at this kind of empathy, such as, uh, is a person nervous around one combatant? Are they biased around another combatant? And then just proxies for measuring that, such as uh, video data or, or biometric data. And so uh, we're really interested in that kind of thread between what we can actually collect, can collect and evaluate, and then the kind of empathy that could be en engendered, or, or the kind of critical thought that, that can be catalyzed by this project. And then impact was another kind of topic that, that came up for us. And the other elephant in the room. Uh, right, and, and so, I mean, for some uh, that I've discussed here, that impact means uh, something only like the number of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, people that have uh, watched your, or engaged with your, your, your medium. You know, for others, impact, uh, that, that's something more uh, like, uh, uh, like what's the kind of social change that, that's been enacted by the system. You know, there's another type of impact, which would be, what about the conceptual change? Is there a new model for understanding this kind of conflict? that people can walk away from, uh, from this experience. And then in computer science and engineering, there are some socially oriented kind of fields that look at a social impact through the lens of what's called social impact statements, for example. And that means something su such as uh, not just impact as a positive thing that we're trying to measure and then the more of the better, but actually what are the kind of broad ranges of types of impact? You know, so in, in, in ecological studies, for example, you want to look at the environmental impacts, you know, not just the kind of positive outcomes, but all the kind of detrimental impacts that could take place too. And so you begin to look at all the different stakeholders that are involved. You, know, you begin to look at the conceptual and social change for those stakeholders, and even for the users of the system, how the system points back at them and their complicity with, 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 within the conflict. And one beautiful point that uh, Kareem mentioned uh, that, that I'll just uh, relate to you before handing this uh, back off to him, which is uh, th this moment in East Congo, where he's standing there in the mine, interviewing soldiers from either side of the conflict in East, East Congo. And, and he has this realization that this is the mine from which the raw materials come from that are actually used to build the computing system that we're engaging this work through. 
And through the augmented reality system and through the website that people can register to engage with this work, which is a different kind of portal, a different kind of narrative to engage with it, we want to also point back to this kind of, like, this kind of chain of connections. And uh, for us, impact means catalyzing that kind of critical awareness around that chain of connections, giving the kind of uh, empathetic, embodied, emotional kind of response to the system, as well as hopefully spur people to some kind of social and conceptual change. Um, so you see, I mean, we're obviously very different and also very complementary. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's great to work with Fox because he pushed my work so, you know, further and further and further. And I think this is, this is the magic of being uh, a fellow at the Open Dog Lab and sticking around with Cass today is, uh, you know, you push as a storyteller. I have a lot of questions. I want to find out a lot of things. Is my work useful? Um, going so far into, you know, like the, the darkest corner of this world, um, I really want to take those risks, but I really want this to, 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 to be impactful to some extent. And this is what we're working on. And, and, and as a last note, and I'd like to open it to you if you have any question after, we're all subject to narrative. We all carry stereotypes, all of us in this room. And um, the work, as, as, as a lot of us here are working and trying to do, is to challenge those stereotypes. It's just to move forward and, and having a better understanding of this world. And I decided to do, because this is my background, to do it in war, where it's really extreme, where people are trained, designed to kill each other. And if we can see humanity in between those two guys, um, then we can start having a little bit of hope for others. Last point, this work is, uh, my target audience is the next generation of fighters. So we're also designing something that we can bring back to the people who could be most impacted by the work. Meaning we bring this back to Congo and we bring this back to Gaza, to Israel and other conflict area. So partnering, and that's the distribution also, it's, it's one of the questions of why we do. But for me, distribution goes through a partnership with an organization that works on reconciliation, that has this ability to go to the village in Congo and, 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 and bring it back to Gaza and all of this. And, and giving this work to them and them assessing, with the work also of Fox, understanding what we do and how we can do it better because we start understanding what it does to the audience and, and, and how we can push that further and hopefully be impactful. Right, and, and I, <laughs> right. Well, well I, don't, I don't mind interstitial applause, <laughs> even applause all throughout. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so I, ju I just wanted to add something specific about the kind of concrete collaboration that we're doing. And so what we realize is that as we have these kind of systems that can adapt to people that, that uh, as they go throughout an experience, what we realized was that uh, uh, as the users go throughout the experience of the enemy, then we can actually measure their uh, nervousness, their bias, their, their bias with each particular kind of combatant, and then actually turn that around to feedback into the experience. For example, changes of uh, lighting within, within the experience, changes of body language, of posture of, of the combatants, based upon the kind of direct address uh, that, that uh, the combatants have with you. you know, so, so that's one of the kind of ideas we have. And then even the fact that your avatar, because you are an avatar within the system, you know, so for others, just so that they don't even uh, walk into you as uh, multi -users go through the, the multiple users go through the experience, then you see a kind of a ghost-like representation of yourself. But then uh, by the very end, how have you changed by the experience? In fact, uh, you know, one of the major themes is that in the right circumstances that any one of us could have been the enemy. And so by the end of the experience, depending on what you have done, in fact, maybe the person that you have been the most uh, nervous with and biased against is in fact uh, who you are at the end of the experience. And so this kind of change, this kind of dynamic change of your own identity as you go through the experience is, is one of the kind of uh, impacts and aspects of the collaboration that we're doing to think about how AI could be integrated into the experience beyond a, a kind of journalistic uh, interview in which you get the kind of uh, embodied uh, interactions and, and uh, uh, facial expressions and body language of the speakers, but also this kind of transformative effect is something that I think is coming out of, out of our shared goals and out of this collaboration. <laughs>